So we, Sam is coming. He's making himself a cup of coffee here. We are gonna get everything squared up here and ready to go. Uh, so today we are going to kind of be talking about some of the things. Oops, I need to mute my laptop here so we can. We're gonna be talking about some of the things that we're doing to help reduce the amount of land there is to mow because mowing is a waste of time, basically. Um, and uh, but we. But we are conscious that sometimes when you look at um, people who like grow everything besides a lawn, you look at their houses and stuff, you're like, mm, couldn't quite get away with that where we live because my neighbors would complain. So just trying to mend, blend the difference between mowing less but still having something that's nice to look at and places for the kids to play, that kind of stuff. So we'll talk about what we're doing. Camera's going to wiggle for a second. But while we're waiting for people, I do have some questions for those smart people out there. Ah, welcome Debbie, you made it. We're glad to have you join us live. Uh, and Silver Moon is here, welcome. So the girls, it's now spring, and the girls go flower picking, and they always ask me what the flowers are that they pick. And I am not a flower person. So you guys can tell me what these are, if you know. So I believe, is this a daffodil? Is that correct? These are all things that grow like wild. I've not planted any of these. So this is the first one I don't think, I don't know. I think maybe it's a daffodil. And that's the second one, which is another daffodil. Or is this the same flower? Welcome, uh, Janice, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Pam. And then the last one is this purple. There's this purple one. I think it looks kind of like lavender to me, but I'm sure that's not. It looks like they're like tiny little bells. So I don't know what that is, but these are sure are pretty. The girls really like picking them. Hello, so, Karen. If you know what any of these are, tell we, me so that can I ask, can tell the kids. <laughs> we can ask uh, halfway through again, too, yeah, if, if nobody knows. If so people don't know. I think these are both daffodils, is my guess. Hello, Welcome. Grammy. Oh, I messed it the up. The purple is it. grape hyacinth. I can see that. They do. They're cute. I mean, they're really pretty. See, yeah, the little bells. The they're like high. tiny little bells. They just grow wild. So. What the yellow ones smell? Let's see. The yeah. other two are definitely. Oh, they're both daffodils. Okay. okay. I feel like these yellow ones. They have a really strong smell. Like every time she picks them, Micah picks them and brings them in. I'm like, what is, what is that? Like, I that sat always, at the table the other night and was, was like, like is, something's going on. She something was like, is I smell stinky. Something. It's not like a beautiful smell. But this one I feel like doesn't smell. Maybe it doesn't. I just can't. No, it doesn't smell. This has kind of. It's not a bad smell, but it's not a good smell either, so. Yeah, the girls love to go out and pick pick flowers. They do. Micah and... is our artist, and so she always picks them, and then she makes me little bouquets to put on the table. So, yeah, Pam agrees. So now we know. Great Thank you hyacinth. all. Now I can tell them tomorrow that, uh, what they're picking. What we know, so. yeah. We can show them. Well, I mean, they see them. We don't need Just to like some pictures. roses have a stronger scent than others. That makes sense. Mm. We do get really beautiful wild sunflowers here, which are really fun. Girls love picking those. Excuse me. But those aren't until like August. They're like later flowers. So it's fun how uh, wild flowers, there's always something in bloom here. Yeah. All year round, or all spring, summer, fall, and it just changes with the season. So thank you, Veronica. Thanks for joining us. All right, so today we're going to talk about Sam's least favorite chore in the homestead. Hello, Josiah's mom. Welcome. What is Sam's least <clears throat> favorite chore in the homestead? Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> would you actually would you My say it's your least, least favorite chore? Uh, yeah, chore that you have to do like very regularly. Mowing the grass. It just feels like a waste of time. Uh, Daffodils, yellow. yellow and white, a twinkle. A twinkle. Ooh, oh, that's, that's cool. They'll like that. Yeah, they will like that. Yeah, I dislike mowing, but I would say, like, as far as chores go, the one that we don't do often, but that I, I dislike, is cleaning out the chicken coop. Other kinds of poop, it's not that bad to clean up. Chicken poop is just nasty, no matter how you slice it. Uh, chicken poop is gross. Hi, Tizzy. Uh, we've had some pretty good rainstorms last few days, not today, but it is still kind of wet outside today. Uh, let's see, Silver Moon says that, uh, she likes to mow. Bluetooth earbuds in and go, kind of zen. 
See, this that's, is that's where what we Laura disagree. Says. I like mowing. Like, I like the, because it's so, like, I know the mower is loud, but it's so quiet. And the kids know that they can't come to the lawnmower because it's not safe. So they leave me alone for an hour and it's wonderful. But it's I can only. Laura's way of getting alone time. It's, I can only mow if somebody's obviously here to watch the children. So mowing interrupts Sam, Sam's schedule no matter who's doing it. So that's why we're trying to lessen the amount that we have to mow on our property. So. Daffodils come from little bulbs sometime a long time ago. They're probably playing where you are. We've seen pictures from the farm probably... From the 50s? Those no, I was going to say we've, we've seen some from maybe 15 years mm -hmm. ago or so. And they had a lot of flowers and plants everywhere. I mean, they were... We have some pictures that we saw. It doesn't have to do with flowers, but we met one of the original owners or their grandchildren. Sounds like your mother. Your great-grandchildren. <laughs> I do sound like my mother. <laughs> um, and they showed us pictures of, of the farmhouse, of Teal House Farm, back when it was a white house and uh, it was not an old house. And that was pretty neat. And of mm -hmm. the property and how they had it set up, it actually answered some of those questions that we kind of were like, why is there this concrete pad in the right. middle of the field? Sort of questions about where everything <clears throat> was. So that was really cool. Um, but the, you know what the most telling thing was? We have this hill at the front of our house. It's not that big of a hill, but you have to push mow it. Like, you cannot go up and down it in a riding lawnmower. It's too steep. Any kind of riding lawnmower, you have to push mow. And in that picture, that hill had about, I don't know, a <laughs> foot of grass on it. Like, they they had mowed everything else. Looked Nobody really clean wanted and to nice. do that. <laughs> They're like, no, we're not mowing that hill. That's the way I feel. Every house we've ever had, we've had a little... It's not been that bad, but we do have a, a hill to mow. So it's it was not a barn. We were it was kind of a weird shape. It was a silo, but the mm -hmm. it was so long ago that it's kind of fallen apart a little bit. So we weren't sure did there used to be a big like circle waterer there or whatever, but it was apparently used to be a little bit bigger and more round and it was a grain silo. Um, for the people people who used to live here originally this house had like 300 acres with it now it has 10 yeah apparently behind us too there was a huge barn. a huge huge barn and i've i've tried to go back in the woods there and find remnants of it but whenever they took it down they did a good job cleaning up because i i can't find find it at all but all right so first thing we have kind of big news ish maybe i don't know if it's big news it's kind of old news to us but new news to you guys and uh, no, it's not another baby. Um, <laughs> one thing we talked about last week. Not that week, we know of. Not that we know of. Grammy's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last time is that we have 10 acres and um, we have a hard time maintaining all the pasture land. Because it's basically all pasture, right? Like nine of the 10 yeah. acres is pasture and right. we don't have a tractor and we don't have enough animals to keep that much knocked down. And so we decided um, our neighbor, our house is like in the middle of a neighbor who owns a lot of acreage. We have like this little cutout and his son. We have kind of a rectangle yeah. going this way. And like he owns land all around us. And his son um, is a little bit younger than us, has decided that, you know, dad is going to sell some of his land to him and he's going to build a house like way in the back but he needed a way to get back there and our house is in the way basically and so we uh, decided Hello, blessed mama. Uh, we traded with him basically a, a couple acres of our land and some of that kind pasture we can't on the maintain. other side of the creek yeah. that we don't even really see or use yeah you can't much. see it from our house and we have never done anything with it and couldn't really do anything with it so he's putting a driveway up there gave that to him and in exchange we got more wooded acres behind our property, which is great because Sam would like to do more hunting. We've talked about certain animals that would prefer wooded land because mm -hmm. wooded land doesn't need, you don't have to have a tractor to be able to mow it down right. multiple times a year, which we don't have. And we don't really don't see any time in the near future. We're going to have the resources to be able to keep store that's expensive and maintain a tractor. But our neighbor over here has all the toys, so he'll be able to keep he'll be able to keep everything looking nice over there, that field. Hello, John, PR6 Gaming, that's my brother. So thanks for jumping on. Welcome. So so one way to lessen the amount of pasture and land that needs mowed and attention is we just got rid of some of it and traded it in for something that doesn't need mowed and doesn't need as much attention. Um, which feels like a little bit of a weight off our shoulders, so. Yes, oh, very much so. Don't ban me this time. Well, Paul isn't here to ban you, so <laughs> at least not that we've seen, so you should be okay, John. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think it'll be really nice. We that field uh, that field's actually it's not in terrible shape. It does have some stuff growing up on it, but we've had a neighbor down the street that has mowed it for hay. It's not the greatest hay, but his cows eat it. So he'll mow it for hay uh, a couple times. And so, I mean, we weren't really getting much use out of it. That neighbor will. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if he'll still mow some of that for hay. He might, but uh, it was really nice to trade. That's less land that we have to try and take care of. But we sure. still have the same amount yeah, to right. work with. It just fits a little better with our, mm -hmm. I guess, our long range plans about what we want to do and where we want to go. So. Uh, so last year, we, as far as mowing, we cut down on some of our front yard to mow, like where you want to keep it really nice and, and looking great, because we put chickens over there. Uh, that's the, is that the west? So side? the house faces yeah. south, so yeah. 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 The west side. The west side, uh, we made a pretty good sized paddock. We had chickens over there, and they kept it down pretty well. How large would you say that paddock is? Like half an acre? Less than that? I'd say a quarter acre, probably and, a quarter acre. And we had maybe 10 chickens over there. Mm -hmm. And they, like, we didn't have to mow it at all, and it didn't look terrible. You just had to weed eat, you know, around the edge a couple times so that the fence would still work. Right. But, I mean. Right, and right now we put the two baby goats together mm -hmm. over there. But I think our plan for the future, uh, what i like to do in the coming weeks, is to, uh, we're going to divide the goats up, the does and bucks, uh, right now they're mixed, which we know isn't isn't good. But we'd like to divide the does and bucks up, and get some uh, some new paddocks made for them. But the plan for up there in the front is uh, to pull all that fencing down. I want to mow it really nice at least once to start to start the year, and then put that uh, electric mesh fencing up, and then maybe put uh, some ducks. And we're talking about getting maybe some geese mm -hmm. over there to help just mow get geese for their uh they like to eat grass apparently from what i've read so we're going to use them as lawnmowers over there for a quarter acre and that'll be our ducks and geese uh over there we might get a couple more ducks too because we only have three right now so we'll get a handful of them and that'll be our kind of our waterfowl area up there in the front yeah if anybody here is watching uh who has raised geese we'd love to if you have any tidbits, add them in the chat because we've never done geese before. One of the reasons we want them is we heard they're very loud and we do have critters, especially in the winter, that try to get on the property to grab chickens, wild critters, and we would like kind of like a watchdog without having to have a dog outside. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping geese will be uh, very loud. Diana says hello, and then Diane says with the price of gas, I'm not going to mow as much that, either. That's a true, very not just time, true. but gas as well. It's very true. And then, uh, so when you go behind that area, still on that side of the house, there's like this, I don't know, 40 foot stretch where it's kind of some of the things the kids play with. Mm -hmm. uh, they have like a trampoline and things like that over there. And then uh, we now have two greenhouses um, and then the main garden and the new spring garden that I just made, which we did a little video about. And between that area, right now, I am working on making a pollinator garden, which is basically just broadcast um, wildflower seeds. And so that won't need mowed. It should look somewhat attractive because it'll be flowers. The girls will love it because they love picking flowers like we showed you at the beginning. And um, that'll actually make it so that almost the entire west side of what used to be mowed doesn't have to be mowed this year and it'll be doing things for the farm. Yeah, I think it'll be really nice. It'll be really pretty to look at. We've always talked about trying to get wildflowers mm -hmm. near our garden, but we haven't. Uh, you were putting in some stepping stones. Yeah, and so I made a too. cute little stepping path. I'm moving. I was moving boulders the other day. You'd be proud of me. <laughs> It, it's gonna. She I, came I, I'm in working said, on a video. She but, came in and said she thought she was gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to send her away for, for another massage, massage <laughs> just to make up for moving all those stones, trying to make a well, path. Well, it's one but. of those things. So like, you go out, like I have a plan. I step out there. It's, I know exactly what I want to do. But then you're like, I'm too proud to come in and ask for help. And well, and I also don't want to bother Sam because he's working really hard studying and every time I have to pull him away from that like that interrupts his studying which is really important for his you know getting his new job so I was like I was just like 
you know, you see people flipping tires. Some of these rocks were too big for me to pick up. So I was like heaving them with the shovel over and then I'd like lever it over again until I rolled it into position and things. So there's an entertaining video coming up for you guys <laughs> of me moving rocks that I probably shouldn't have been moving. So, but I think it'll look good and I'm hoping the rocks make a clear border so it's very easy to tell where to stop mowing instead of it just looking like a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I mean, all of those rocks. There's like 40 yeah. boulders over there. They, that, we pulled those all, all out of our out garden. Of the garden. It, when we were first making <laughs> videos of the garden and we showed all the tilling that we did and just the pile of rocks, the number one question that we always got, because it's that white picket fence and such, everyone was like, are you sure that's not a graveyard? Because that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. And I'm happy to tell you we have never found any bones or caskets in <laughs> there's there. There's so, so many, like, foundation stones in there. There's no way somebody ever buried something in there. I think they had stones, because they, they were kind of outlined. I think they had them. I think it was, like, some kind of a flower garden kind of a thing going on. And they used those to outline uh, where they had planted some stuff. So we've never found any bones. But it does... And all the neighbors... Uh, around here that have come up and said hi and introduced themselves and such at some point in time they always ask us at least when we first moved up here they're like is that a graveyard back there we've always wondered but just never knew it's, yeah it's a it's garden not, it, it does kind of look like it. when though. we moved here it was like um they had the big fence around it but it wasn't a row garden it had like three raised beds but they weren't like reusable raised beds like they had created mounds and planted in them mm -hmm. Um, so they had been, which is why we put our garden there. Because we were like, hey, oh, if they had gardens, yeah. that, that makes must means it's a good place for a garden. It's a terrible place for a garden. It okay? was. It was bad, bad choice. But I'm like so many years into improving the soil that I, I will not give up. We're going to keep the garden there. We'll expand it out, which is what we're doing. But gosh darn it, all those years of composting and tilling it under and layers of straw to like make the soil better. I'm like too too far in to look yeah. back now <laughs> my brother paul helped with a lot of that for sure we were talking about him earlier he was down here with that tiller mm -hmm. helping to pull rocks out and such i mean there are some massive rocks in that garden but uh so let's see the next part uh i guess behind the house uh back where the goats are is where i want to keep the does because they'll be close to the barn for uh milking i thought about putting them further away we thought about putting them out front there in that west portion or out in our big pasture mm -hmm. uh but last year i had the big pasture fenced for uh for the does and they just did not want to go out there at all they wanted to stay close to the barn like they very very rarely ventured out to the the big field and i had like a I had a way for them to go out there. Sam was really offended because he worked was, really hard I to did. make them a nice little walkway. And, and they knew paddock. it was like, they knew the path was there. You know, you know, goats are very smart. And they, like, I walked out there to the field with them numerous times. Be like, look, look at all this pasture you can eat in. And they didn't go out there. Our buck Devo would, he would go out there and eat. Uh, but, you know, he didn't do that very often because they don't like to be by themselves if they can help it. Uh, so anyway, the does I'm going to keep up near the shed. And that's just going to be convenient anyway. And then our bucks, we're going to put them out in the pasture. And we're actually going to take uh, the same kind of uh, shed that we have our greenhouses in. I've got one that's kind of fallen down that I'm going to try and, if I can, try and salvage. And uh, we're going to put that out in the pasture, Put a nice, uh, put a nice tarp over it. Hello, Charlie and yeah. Judy. What, did I miss some comments? Yeah, we'll oh, go back. Go okay. ahead. Finish your thought. Uh, so we'll put the bucks out in the back part of the pasture, and hopefully they can help keep that area mowed down. It's a pretty good area, so we might need to get some more animals. And we've been discussing that, and we thought we might ask some of your yeah, all's we're gonna be opinions, your opinions. Uh, about some different animals. Because we don't agree. <laughs> yeah, we don't agree. 100%, <laughs> but that's kind of the plan, for at least for the goats, of what we're going to do with them. So Lois says that geese are like guard dogs. Farm across the street from us have geese, and our dogs are even afraid of them. So one of the things that we did talk about was whether, a, bit, a while ago, that we would have a free-range, like, heritage poultry kind of thing with turkeys and geese and ducks. Because mm -hmm. um, we had free-range chickens for a long time, but Sam said that 
he was worried that the geese would be too aggressive with the kids, that they would just get in attack mode. And that's, so I think we'll keep them in the fence, but we're hoping that they will be intimidating for raccoons and such things that seem to be able to not be dissuaded by our fencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just, with like turkeys, I mean, I don't know, the, the little, little kids, that's what I'm afraid of. The ones that are, you know, two and under kind of, well, even like, even JJ, mm -hmm. uh, they can be, a, you know, if a goose or a turkey or something tries to go after them, they're just, they're too, they're too little to kind of be able to fend for themselves, uh, so to speak, and run away. And it just makes me worried just a little bit. Because, you know, 90% of the time your animals do really well with, uh, do really well with our kids anyway. But sometimes, just when you turn your back, something happens and... I don't want to do that. Uh, Charlie says that guineas are good watchdogs as well. We know we yeah. tried guineas, but we couldn't get them to stay. We had guineas. Uh, we got them some from some friends at church. Did we get three? I think we had mm -hmm. three. And I kept them locked up in a an old chicken coop for seven weeks. I read online to keep them in for six, and we did either seven or eight weeks. Kept them in uh, in our chicken coop for seven or eight weeks. I let them out one night, and they all flew away to the woods, and mm. we never got them back. <laughs> Actually, I think I may have caught one. I, I did my best to get out there. They're really hard to catch. They fly really well. But uh, a lot of people say if they're not raised on your farm as babies, then good luck trying to get them to stay. And we, we had no luck with guineas. But I've heard the same thing, and they're good with ticks as well. Yeah, we have plenty of those, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Prep for Eternity, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And Judy, I would love your tiger lilies, and the girls would think that was really cool, too. So you know where to find me. Uh, Silver Moon said sheep, she says, <laughs> as she's being yelled at by sheep. <laughs> All right, so here's the part where we are in total agreement, and, and uh, it's about... We have another field that is basically untouched forever. Um, we know that the people before us had horses on it, but the the pasture... They had everything. They had, like, sheep, cows, horses. Like They had a, a lot of... The stuff. pasture is not very good. It's got a lot of junk weeds in it that even the goats were like, no. It's got... It's got <laughs> well, the, the first half of the field, uh, I guess the south half of the field, has a, it's just infested with cockle burrs. And if anyone has ever dealt with them, you know they're almost impossible to get rid of. You either have to basically mow the field regularly for like three years or just hit it with uh, a lot of chemicals to try and or kill them. burn it, right? Nope, you can't, can't burn, burn it. it. Burn it, Burning it and flooding it does not kill cockleburr seeds. They will, they will live on, so. Uh, uh, so anyway. Hello, Prep for Eternity. We are kind of... What we want to do because of the cockleburrs is mow that field down several, like basically every week for a couple week summers. And the idea would be that would improve the pasture so that maybe in like three years it would really be ready for something mm -hmm. like a cow, a couple cows or something. Excuse me, but we don't want to have to mow that whole. I mean, how many acres is that field? Four, three? Yeah, it's. It's probably half of it. I'd say it's like five. Yeah. That's that's too much. And also parts Wait, of it... When we say mow, we mean like with a little riding lawn mower. Not, okay. not like a big don't, zero turn or a we tractor don't have or anything like that. We have basic equipment. Yeah. So we're trying to cut the field in half and put something on the back half of the field. Because the back half of the field actually has some decent grass on it and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, we're thinking something that... Uh, maybe we could rotate through using the electric fence that we already have and kind of like set paddocks and kind of rotate it around. I want pigs. That's what I would like. And, you know, every three days or so would move it, which I understand. I mean, it's an incredible amount of work. Um, but Sam is concerned that pigs are very smart and well, that they would be a headache. Yeah, my concern is we've never raised them, and I don't want it to be a steep learning curve because we would probably fence them in with electric. And once you get your electric fence dialed in, I know it's it'll be good to go. But I'm afraid that we'll spend all of our time chasing pigs around the first year or two until we figure out a good process for everything. Because I know they can be, they tend to be, they can be kind of hard to catch and, and get back. So one of the reasons I want pigs, though, is because, like, the pig, we don't have to feed it all over winter because 
at what like nine nine by nine months not even that yeah, long we'd, we'd get some little feeder pigs you, we'd butcher for them seven or eight and then months. you won't be having to feed it all winter but pigs you know we've never had pigs before and from what we understand they're one of the most difficult things to kind of get good at containing and so the other thing we talked about was getting maybe two bottle calves but the issue with bottle calves is they'd be good over the summer, but all winter they would feed hay and cows eat a lot of hay. Mm. And we don't have the ability to cut our own hay right now because we don't have the equipment for it. We don't it. have a place to store and like have 100 a, bales. Can't or... store a ton of hay. So we would have to, you know, every other week go buy 20 bales of hay, mm. which then you're at the mercy of the price on the market. And like two years ago, was it like we even struggled to find enough hay for the goats Never mind, a cow is going to eat four times the amount of hay. Right. So that was concerning. We'll make sure that we can take care of the animals. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, we've thought about expanding our flock a little bit more to take up some more room. I mean, chickens, turkeys, geese, uh, like all of that, they're not going to, they're not really going to take care of a whole pasture, I wouldn't think, unless you're going for like, you know, 50 or 60. I don't know. We want to. Uh, expand to that many I think the other thing that we've talked about that we could do uh, well actually I was thinking of this last night as I was going to bed we could expand our goat herd mm -hmm. uh, we could get like some meat goats to put back there with the bucks if we wanted to because then they could eat back there but we know how to fence goats in right. we know how to handle them we've been around goats quite a bit so that would be pretty easy and we've never had goat meat we've yeah that would be the goat. that would be the Plus up, like we do all that work, but we've never actually tried goat. And what if we didn't like it? And then you have like 200 pounds of goat meat and then you're like, nobody will eat it. Um, so, so far, I would say all the things we've tried, even the goat milk, like our kids don't like drinking goat milk. I don't even, like it's okay. I'll drink Just it. all by itself, straight from but the bottle. But this week they've had smoothies and yogurt and what else? I mean, cheese. And I'm going to try making some ice cream. They had no idea it was goat milk. And they, like, gobbled it up. So but The yogurt you made oh, it was, was so good. <laughs> it was so creamy and thick. Oh, it was terrific. It was, I think, honestly, I'm not going to lie. That might be the best yogurt you've ever made. It had it's such so a good thick. taste and was so creamy and thick. It was awesome. So, some of it, say all that to say, some of it's just a learning curve. You have to learn how to prep stuff in a way that you like it. Because a lot of these homestead type things that are that we can produce for ourselves are different than what you buy in the supermarket and our taste buds just aren't ready for them uh, hello cool. my little rural homestead thanks, thanks for j jumping on we're getting some uh let's see did we talk to carolyn she planted wild flowers oh good uh they yeah. did really well so this oh. basically sounds like what i bought i went to the dollar tree and they had wildflower mixes and i was like all right everybody pick a box of what <laughs> you think is pretty and we're just gonna throw it all the girls there. man they love that when you can get them involved we did that a couple years ago with chickens we're like pick what kind of breeds you want and they just they love that uh let's see silver moon says start with a couple young girl pigs you have time to get used to them while they're more manageable that's very true uh, try Living Traditions Homestead. I've seen some of their videos. They have pigs, cows, chickens, and more mm -hmm. with the Idaho Pasture Pigs. That's kind of a new uh, breed for homesteaders that I, I have read about them quite a bit. Um, uh, my little rural homestead finally making it live. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for joining us. You actually, you had a video came up on my feed. Now I can't remember what it was, but I saved it to watch later because I was like, man. That looks really interesting. So tell me, remind me what you, it was, you either posted it today or yesterday, but it, it was a really interesting topic and you were in your kitchen. I saved it. I'm going to watch it later. <clears throat> so, uh, Virginia, we had pigs. Yeah. This is what I'm afraid of that. They were going to be impossible. And we're going to be like, what did we do? So I think somebody's coming oh, downstairs with a poopy see. diaper. <laughs> I'll be right back. Off topic. We're trying to potty train Isla and we, she wants none of it. And she knows. She's smart, and she knows, but she told me tonight, she's like, I don't want undies. I want my diapers. <laughs> I don't want you to want your diapers. I want you to want undies, because it's easier. Uh, anyway, she's coming down for a new diaper. Um, ah, monkey butter, that's it. Yes, I'm going to watch that later. That looked really neat. I'm, I'm really interested to see, see it, so stay tuned. I will be watching. Uh, let's see, Prep for Eternity. Late to the conversation, we may have discussed that we raised sheep. Meat is good and best grazers for grass. You know, we have not 
that's not something that we even talked about. We were talking about options. But maybe that's something we should consider. I know some people even milk sheep. I don't know if it's worth the effort, uh, but I know that that's a thing. Uh, Silver Moon says, you can keep goats in, then you should be able to handle pigs. Okay, I suggest American guinea hogs to learn. Silver Moon, if you have a video about how you fence your pigs, link it in here, and I'm going to catch it later um, and just see how you do it, because I would be interested. Let's uh, see. All right, I'm down here. I did a video on breeding rabbits. That's Oh, yeah, we did talk about that, too. Rabbits aren't really going to keep the grass down as much. We talked about moving, putting some rabbits in a movable pen. pen and putting them in with the turkeys and geese and just moving them around. Just they could extra mowing. Help, help with the mowing, I think. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, with the sheep. I've thought about sheep before, uh, but my only concern with sheep is, like I said, that pasture. Uh, and hopefully the sheep would be on the good side, but that pasture does have cockleburrs in it. And I would be afraid that they would just get all matted and nasty really fast. Like the goats have a fairly short coat, but I still have to pick out cockleburrs uh, in, in their coats, uh, you know, before they get nasty. Uh, what was the other? Oh, with pigs. Yes. I was thinking too with pigs. Some of those smaller breeds, like the American guinea hogs or the cooney coonies or the, the Idaho, Idaho pasture pigs are a little bit bigger. But, like, we just have the one deep freeze. So if we did do a couple pigs, we either have to sell one or give it away to mm -hmm. family and friends. Uh, but well, I don't. we couldn't do two huge pigs for ourselves. Well, can, you can can a lot of it. I did that last year with the pig that we bought. So. Yeah, hey, Isla, like, come here. Come here, Isla. It would be like... Well, I don't know. Well, I know it's like 300 pounds of meat. meat. One time we <laughs> went to the butcher. So we've uh, we've been buying whole hogs from a friend, a friend of a friend. And uh, normally he has a feeder pig that he raises. And then he'll, when you're ready, you just tell him and he'll, he'll butcher a feeder pig. He'll send it to the butcher. Well, one year we told him we were ready for a pig, except he, he had a sow butcher. And we didn't realize it. And so I got to, I got to the butcher expecting, I don't know what we usually get, like 120 pounds of meat, 100, and we ended up with like 250, 275 pounds, like 100 pounds extra because he butchered such a big sow. Apparently, the story that we got was that the sow got out, and he could not catch her. He was, she was one of his breeding sows he could not catch her and so she just got sent to the butcher uh yeah i want to get rabbits too they are quiet I, I i do think the girls would enjoy the rabbits we've been we've talked about them a lot and i know they're really cheap and easy to get into we just need to take the dive for rabbits i think let's see, let's see. holler homestead does pigs and they're on the cheap uh they're worth check. watching we'll have to check that out Pam, I also enjoy the hollers. Let's see. Oh, we were we were talking about rabbits. So yes, we'll check that out, Summer yep. Moon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hair cross breeds they don't have to be sheared, right? Lose their fur on their own, maybe an option. Okay. okay. The hair sheep, the like the Katahdin. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only hair sheep I know. I know there's other breeds out there, but I can't remember them. I haven't I haven't looked into sheep. Very late, uh, so do very you raise late. a hair sheep then for meat? Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. They're they're just for butcher. And you've had lamb before. Yeah, right? that's the one we were talking about a while ago. When I where I grew up on the East Coast, and you could buy lamb in the store. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, you can't, can't I've find never that seen here. It out here. I mean, there's. I think there's. You could find it out here if you called a farmer Call directly, him. but just in the grocery stores. Well, we don't and, really shop in well, the. The ones yeah. in the city. They might be, if, if we went closer to St. Louis, we might be able to find some. Who's yeah. my favorite? Oh, Stephen, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that. You know I can't answer that. <laughs> uh, or maybe I should say John is right now because he's on the live stream. Yeah, that's and true. <laughs> Paul isn't. Uh, oh, but anyway, I was saying, when I was great, my mom would buy lamb at the store and we would have... Like, I, a couple times a month, we'd have lamb patties, is what we call them. Basically, like, hamburger ground, patties. Ground, ground lamb. lamb. I think we could buy it because... Do you remember what it tasted like? Uh, Did it... I remember... Like, I can burger? think of the taste, 
but I can't think of how to describe it. It wasn't, like, goaty or anything. It was good. I really liked them. We'd always dip them in, like, sauce. Um, I think we could buy it, though, because where I grew up, there was a larger Jewish community. Oh, okay. okay. What are you pinching your cheek for? Um, and so stuff like that would be available around certain holidays. My mom would buy it. But I, I miss that, though. Like, I could taste them in my mouth, be like, that was, a, <coughs> that was something I enjoyed, but Mommy. we can never get lamb out here. Mommy, so. Mommy. Have mm. we seen any predator animals that, that cause problems if you place larger chicken population further away from house? We do have, we do have coyotes mm. that... Uh, they, they can get pretty close. And before, when we had our large guard dogs, they kept the coyotes far away. But we have had, we've got coyotes around for sure, uh, a pretty good sized pack of them. We have mm -hmm. conservation land to the south of us, Wait. and the coyotes are up on that ridge. Sometimes it feels like every other night. Um, but uh, I know we also have uh, raccoons mm -hmm. and... Uh, Foxes, we've seen foxes before, we so we've got a little bit of everything. Most of our problems seem to come from raccoons. I yeah, would I would say, I would say so. Um, so they, Pam says they sell lamb meat at Hy-Vee, so I have to check that out. There is a Hy-Vee near where Annie does therapy, so mm -hmm. we'll have to see if we can find that next time we're in the city. So. We all know what you're thinking, John says. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, lamb is delicious and tender. Yeah, I think that's that's a good word to describe it. It was very, it wasn't sometimes hamburger, like these hamburger can be kind of like gritty-ish or chewy-ish. Lamb, it was like slicing a cake. Like oh, was really? Was that it, smooth It was just very tender? smooth flavor. It was good. And I have that recipe from Grammy's recipe book, if we ever have lamb. Hmm. I think the girls would well, like it. Well, maybe so. sheep's. Sheep's on the menu. Where we should go. <laughs> Uh, make sure the kids have been around rabbits. They started raising rabbits and discovered their daughter was allergic. Oh, Aww, that's a bummer. Great meat, great manure. I would really like the manure really? for the garden. She's not allergic to other animals, that's just rabbits. You sometimes, sit with daddy? Sometimes <clears throat> it's uh, like the things you don't think of that are like, I would never yeah. even have thought about she that. But yeah, no, you have all these other. It. You see yourself? You see yourself on the camera? Who is that? Is that Isla? <laughs> yeah, you have all these other other animals. You wouldn't think rabbits would be a problem at all. Uh, Karen asked if pigs eat that weed. No, I've looked it up. The, the issue with cocklebur is that uh, pigs especially are the... It's toxic to them. They're toxic to cows. And, uh, but goats can kind of eat it and it... It might not be good for them, but it doesn't kill them. Now, a lot of people, you get on online forums and such, and people will be like, I put all my goats in the middle of a cockerbur field, and they just ate it all, and nobody got sick at all. And then the person underneath them says, you know, well, my goat saw yeah. one cockerbur plant, ate it, and died ten minutes later. So, but when, I, I, I try not to read some of those forums, because who knows if you're getting good advice when it's just the general public and whoever has a keyboard can put information out. <laughs> but when you read like some of the uh, articles from like the universities and such that have done research, uh, cocklebur is pretty, <laughs> you're silly. Cocklebur is toxic to a lot of animals, but goats can kind of get through it and tolerate it without it being too big of, a, of an issue. Hey look, see she's waving look. back at you. See the, see the, Look at that. She's waving. She waved at uh, Let's see. So, uh, where are we at? Uh, so, pigs should eat everything, at least kill a lot of it. And my hope was that they would dig it up and just kill, it, kind of kill it that way. And if we did that enough years in a row, it couldn't propagate because it couldn't go to seed. But, but I think I think it would be toxic to them, and I would be afraid of the the pigs ready to go just back kind of making that whole pasture kind of pockmarked. And it would it would be it would be hard to use it for much of anything else when the pigs got done with it if you let them completely tear it up and till it. Let's see. Pam says. So you can Bukilla find a says, store that sells lamb. Yeah. Should we able to find out the cheap because of Easter? I, yeah, that's true. We should just go look next time I'm in the city. I mean, I'm there every day right now with Annie. So. Yeah, we should. We can try it. First thing we did was raise hogs. We moved to the farm. You need to be careful with them in the heat. They can't sweat except through their nose. Yeah, we definitely would make sure that they've got uh, somewhere place, to wade. Yeah, some some shade for them. If it kills them, yeah, yeah not, not an option. option. Yeah, I know. Uh, that I mean that the cockleburr is it's 
Oh, it's it's terrible. And it's easy to spread. Stop, stop, stop. You gotta shake the camera. Then people can't see you. Yeah. The problem with cockleburr is it's super easy to spread. Like someone could get just a couple of seeds and some hay that you buy and all of a sudden It's all over the place. It's all over the place. And the only way to kill it is to literally pull it up. Uh, a lot of people pull it all up and throw it somewhere to uh, to keep it mowed down for years at a time or to to spray chemicals on it pretty frequently. Uh, let's see. Isla is absolutely beautiful and so precious. I'm enjoying listening to the conversation. Mm -hmm. you're, the, you. you're the star of the show, yeah. Isla. Everybody Shade else is going to be so hole jealous was, upstairs. We'll do pigs <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do with those two acres. We know the front half with the cockle birds, we're, we're going to try and mow it. and keep that knocked down. But then the back half, what what to do? That's That's the question. And I've told Laura, I'm not, probably online this is going to sound really selfish, but with school coming up, it's a full-time gig for the next year. They, they recommend uh, you work in 20 hours or so maximum outside of doing the school. And so with the farm, too, I'm going to keep my job at the church while going to school. But I didn't want to add a bunch of new animals mm -hmm. that we'd, we've we never done anything with before. And then uh, always, chase, yeah, yeah. always chasing animals or not knowing what we're doing, having sick animals or whatever. Well, I feel like, you know, adding the, the larger birds and some rabbits and pullable coops, mm -hmm. like that's... That's It'll all help. things I can do, but when we're talking about what's over there in that field, you ready to go back upstairs? Okay, bye. Um, there's a there's a decent chance that after we get it set up, like I'm obviously gonna need his help to get it set up, and then afterwards, if there's problems, I'm gonna need his help too. So your diaper's okay. I fixed it. <laughs> so you don't trust it. <laughs> uh, so I don't. Let's we'll figure out what we. Probably make a decision here in the next couple of weeks because mm -hmm. it's spring. It's already we the grass needs to be mowed already just from the yeah. rain we've had the last two or three days. It's crazy. So yeah, we do need to make a decision pretty quick before it gets out of hand back there. Especially if you want to move some coops and things like that. If it, the grass gets really long and tall, it's but tough to do. Even just expanding the garden, adding those chickens out front in the greenhouses, like. It, it's cut down on the amount of mowing we have to do considerably. It used to take several days to mow around the farmhouse. And then as soon as you finished, you had like two days before it was time to start the cycle again. And now it's really a small enough area. Um, you could mow it all. I mean, it'd take a few hours. You could do it in one day. Mm -hmm. um, don't, like you can squeeze it in during nap time or something. Now, it's hard. It's, uh, I mean, it's not that bad. I don't want to complain about it. But it's kind of a hard property to mow. Because there's trees everywhere, plants and stuff. So there's, everywhere you go, there's something to mow around, which makes it take, take a little longer. bit longer. Yeah. Not shellfish if you're going to school and working. Oh, selfish. selfish. Yeah. A lot of studying and then working. Yeah. Yep. I I don't know. I just want to be smart and not, not pile on too much. Because they, every time... I actually have orientation for school tomorrow, so that'll be fun, and we'll learn a little bit more. But every time, like, I had to go in for an interview and such, and every time we've communicated with the school, they keep emphasizing how intense this program is to complete your uh, bachelor's in a year. Uh, and so I don't want to well, bite like off. Four, well, it's four yeah. year, Well, two years of nursing yeah. school and doing it in a year. So. Yeah, that's true. Going to school is like another full-time job, so you'll have three full-time jobs, work, school, and family. Yeah. So. It's, I, I don't want to bite off. I told Laura I, I don't want to, like, not do anything on the homestead the next year, but if if we cannot do a lot of new things for a year, I think it would be good until until we get our feet under us just a little bit. I can't spell that well. That's all right. My, I can't read very yeah. well either, so. <laughs> My downfall is the talk to text. Because a lot of times, you know, I'm just busy. And so when I respond to somebody, I do a talk to text. And the other day, somebody had texted me about how, like, <laughs> they had gotten this amazing answer to prayers. And I was, and I t 
texted back, I told Siri what an, uh, what an answer to prayer. <laughs> and Siri texted them what an answer to taters, like potatoes. <laughs> Oh, it was perfect. It was in a group chat, too. Yeah, I know. So everybody saw it. Saw it. You the could, whole family like, saw it. Great. Good job. Uh, it was <laughs> hilarious. To what an answer to taters. <laughs> uh, it was um, perfect. And Silverman says, with a better job, you'll be able to get better equipment. That's one of the things we talked about. That's what we're hoping for. We feel we like our biggest downfall, not downfall, but... Limiting factor? Our limiting factor has been just income was not high enough to move the homestead forward. Like we had these great big dreams and like willing to work like really, really hard. But at some point, like you have to have a barn to hold things, to hold your hay. Like, mm -hmm. or you have to have a tractor if you're going to have large animals and you need to move large bales or you right. need to mow down a field. And like, you just cannot afford those. A lot of it was stuff we've kind of, I don't know, we've not made the best decisions i guess because we bought a farmhouse that needs a lot of work and a lot of help to get it back on its feet so that's one one place that sucks up money then you have the homestead that was vacant for eight years and so the outside needs but a lot the of work land yeah, the land needs a lot of work and then i don't want to like blame her but annie's uh physical issues at least the first few years we really struggled financially too trying to get our feet under us and just trying to figure out what she had and what was going on just all the medical costs associated with it <clears throat> but i will say um, and having six kids yeah. on like, the flip side because the property we bought was so like derelict when we bought it our mortgage payments are so low mm -hmm. Like, we owe so little on it that once he has a better job, like, we're going to be able to pay off our property really quickly and then, like, just be able to have the extra money to do things. And so it's almost going to be, like, a positive. Yeah. But we just are, we should have, we should have had better jobs or more money saved or some other type of income set up before trying to do this live off the land because we just kind of got stuck. You couldn't move forward to make things better. You're getting a, a behind the scenes peek at yeah. Teal House Farm <laughs> tonight. <clears throat> the life never turns out the way you think it will too. That's true. I, you know, if we hadn't had a lot of medical debt with Annie and all that time driving, just those years that we spent driving trying to figure things out, we may have been able to get farther ahead on less money. That just, it was such a money suck and a time suck and and in, then the interest compounds, and it's just, like, unimaginable. So, um, Silverman says, I want to buy an old farmhouse and fix it up. I love the idea of renewing something and bringing it back to life. It is really it is cool. Fun. And, you know, we complain about it, but I'm very thankful for this house, mm -hmm. you know. And it's plenty of space for us. I may not, you know, there's always something that needs fixed, but as far as things go, like, there's a lot of charm to it and there's a lot of things about it we do yeah. love and we have gotten some cool things done mm -hmm. like to the house so it's in progress and learning the history of it and how many families uh, this house has helped raise and such mm -hmm. it's uh, so, it is pretty cool i don't feel like i don't <clears throat> think like we regret it but i don't think we planned well enough yeah we didn't we didn't have realistic well. expectations that was the problem we so now we're working well. on fixing that <laughs> <clears throat> hindsight is always twenty twenty, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, let's see. Any step forward, still step forward, no matter how small. Yep, we'll get there. We will, for sure. You watch the Holler Homestead, too? Well, I guess too? we're going to have to go watch some videos. I've watched a few of their videos, but not lately. You can be proud of all you've done, especially with not a ton of money. It's been mostly hard work and salvage materials and yeah. stuff around here. But. It is amazing what you can do with a little ingenuity. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, you built chicken coops out of, like, dust and air, basically. <laughs> it felt like it sometimes. <laughs> Some screws you scraped out at the soil. We had a huge, out, just outside our mudroom door here, we had a huge kind of scrap pile for the longest time where we had had friends come and uh, drop off pieces of barns and sheds and things that they had and I, that's what I've built most of our chicken coops yep. and uh, goat I mean houses and stuff Charlie like and Judy who are here in the chat gave you a couple sheets of roofing well, they gave material me a lot of sheets of and roofing. we've made and we every we've made everything yeah. out of if you we walk have. if you were to drive by our homestead you're like wow they had a lot of tin roofing material yeah. didn't they because <laughs> like everything is made out of it but yep. it was amazing we made so much out of it we did uh, Debbie says things work out how God wants them. And I think that's true. I was sharing in Bible study Sunday. I was like, you know, after Annie 
was born, Sam really felt like God was telling him that there was going to be a big change. We didn't know what that meant. And then two years ago, he started really thinking like he was being led into going back to school to be a nurse. And we were like, there's no way, you know, you can make that happen because, you know, I can't work a full-time job, take care of all the kids and get any, like, even if all the kids went to daycare or school, Annie still has multiple appointments every week. She's got multiple surgeries coming up. Like somebody has to bring her there. Um, so it'd be very difficult to work a good paying job while he is in school. Um, but it really, like, we really believed that that was what we were supposed to do. And we started the steps and like things have really just fallen into place, you know, even with like, uh, like student loans and scholarships and things that we didn't think he was going to qualify for because he's an old man and not a, just at a high school kind of person. Yeah. Um, well, even so. getting into the school, I didn't, I wanted to make a change quickly and, you know, I, I've said before, like, we looked into trade schools and such like that, uh, but I wanted to try and make a transition really fast. And this school is really close. It's not that far away. And there are a number of other schools closer to St. Louis doing the same thing. But I was able to just squeak into, I mean, squeak into this program by the skin of my teeth. A lot of hard work in, like, two months' time, three months' time. Uh, but it all worked out. Uh, just right and so we do feel blessed uh, going mm -hmm. into this kind of a new adventure uh, let's see Sam's a magician have you tried pallets I picked them up for free yes we have had pallets our problem for the longest time was we didn't have a truck or a way to haul them and so getting some materials down here we just had to rely on friends if they had uh, a truck and were heading this way or whatever have you ever seen those like memes of somebody who's got like a little sports car and they have like a couch strapped to the top of it? That that was us trying to move stuff to the front. I can't remember years. that. <laughs> I had the number. Our we had a Mazda six, which is surprisingly roomy inside. But if I laid the seats down, yeah. I'm trying to so remember the number. No, like that, no. Uh, as far as two by fours, I could fit like twenty two by fours in that thing. It was surprisingly. You wouldn't think so, but I could, and I did it multiple times. But, uh, now yeah, we now we have a truck. We can do things like get pallets and uh, other kinds of equipment. Uh, let's see, or, uh, says, don't forget to check Greg's link and Facebook market, mm. Marketplace, too. That's very true. We've gotten things off of there when we're looking for something specific. Yeah. Uh, anytime we want to buy something, we almost always look at, like, the Facebook Marketplace. We've bought and sold a lot of stuff there. You can get it so cheap. Homestead Tessie, we love Homestead Tessie. Mm -hmm. we, I watch her all the time. I know she watches us. So we really appreciate her shout out, which I know brought a lot of you to our channel. So she has some really just neat ways of making every penny count. So. She does, yep. Uh, raccoons for sure, but the armadillos root up everything here. We do have armadillos, but we don't have a ton of them around here. Mm -hmm. Our dog Lexi found a dead one the other day and rolled in it after I had just given her a bath. Oh, she smelled she terrible. Smelled <laughs> terrible. Oh, it was awful. We do have them, but we don't have a ton of them here in Missouri. It's actually, I was reading an article, it's like a big deal because armadillos can't cross the Missouri River mm -hmm. and we're just on the other side. But like in the last 20 years or whatever, since they have <clears throat> more bridges across the Missouri now that they're starting to like come across the bridges. And so now they're starting to be an armadillo problem. Problem, you know. They don't have, I guess, natural predators up here, not enough natural predators. And they cause a lot I of damage. I would think coyotes and stuff go so. after them, but I don't know. Uh, Logan and Lexi, say hi. Our niece and nephew. Hello, Logan Hello. and Lexi. Thank you for watching. I came here from Homestead, Tessie, live in central okay. Oklahoma. Okay. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you, Tizzy, for jumping in. Free cycle. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I've not looked at free cycle. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the fake... Facebook Marketplace might be my guilty pleasure. I really enjoy You can get lost scrolling through the Facebook Marketplace for things. You really can. Same with Craigslist. Uh, I think most of the time when we try to find animals to buy, we've gone through Craigslist. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, items or tools or whatever, we look more through the, the Marketplace. I say it gets frustrating trying to find or sell farm animals because there's so many social media sites that don't allow you to post them. And mm -hmm. so then it becomes really hard to be able to connect with people who would have the things that you need. That, that does get frustrating. So The other thing is, well, the one reason I don't like Craigslist, 
uh, it's, it seems like people can be a little more flaky on Craigslist. You get spammed a lot on Craigslist. <laughs> you get your time wasted a lot. Than, uh, than yeah. Facebook Marketplace, but anyway. I got oh. a wine fridge off Facebook Convert Marketplace. Convert it into an incubator. Well, that's Ooh, a good idea. That is a good idea. I like that. I'm trying to think. What's the last thing you got off the Facebook Marketplace? Probably the stove. Yeah, we bought a stove. Bought a stove. It was in like like new condition. We got it probably half of what it was new. It was only maybe two years old. Yeah, the stove we had before came with the house, Ugh. and it was like nineteen seventies. It, it was gross. Oh, I've, it was so gross. It, oh, I I don't even want to describe How what happened was. in that fridge in that stove before we got here. What it was like underneath. Oh, it was. Uh, so gross and nasty. But we got rid of it, and we got a got a nicer one. That's one of the best purchases we've ever yep. made. Buying a, a new stove. Buying a new oh, stove. Ooh, that was gross. So Carolyn is in Washington. That's quite a ways. Yakima, Washington. I have a cousin that lives in Washington State. Uh, um, what else we got? Anything? I'm trying to think. So we're mowing less this year. That's the end. That's of the that's grow the food, goal. not lawns. <laughs> yep. Or animals. Grow animals. Not lawns. <laughs> We've thought about uh, Laura's. We uh, was it last year we borrowed the incubator? Yeah. Or was it two years ago? We borrowed the incubator. Last year we borrowed an incubator from a friend, and we enjoyed it. And the girls eventually enjoyed it. <laughs> Sometimes they didn't so much enjoy it, but uh, I think they eventually did. So we've been thinking if we do get some more animals here some uh, turkeys and geese and such uh, to try and get some breeding pairs and an incubator so we can do that as well the girls enjoyed the incubator after the first round i feel like because they saw what because they saw what yeah. that what you know the chickens were actually going to have before they were like you're making me turn these eggs twice a day and nothing's happening it looks exactly the same every day but once the chicks started to hatch they were like oh this is so cool they were and all so over it were all I, over oh it. let me tell you though we had I don't know why I'm telling this story now, but it oh, it was so tough. We had one chick that was born, and he was all out of whack. He was... He was his, not put together correctly, no, he anatomically was, correct. He was halfway inside and out of himself, and I didn't think he was going to make it, but he kept living after he popped out of the shell, and I had to dispatch him, and oh... So that guilty. is one of the hardest things to do. Baby chick that is just sitting there cheap, cheap, cheaping. Oh. He was going to die a very slow and painful He was. Like, he was not going it. to make his, it. He his, was like, organs were growing on the outside. Oh, it was, he was, it was gonna, bad. Something bad. But he, I, I thought once he popped, he had trouble getting out of the and shell. he got out. He finally got out. I'm like, okay, this is good. And then he's sitting there, and I'm like, he does not look right. And I thought, well, he probably... Just give him a couple minutes. He's probably not going to make days it. Days later. It wasn't that. Was it? No. Like it was, it like was two that days. night. Oh, no, okay. it was that night. We didn't let him go that long. Uh, we gave him like an hour or so to see if he would, if uh, he would just go, but he didn't. Oh, it was Because those are tough. the hard choices to make. That is. Yeah, an incubator. We're, I think we're going to try that. We're thinking about it. Yes, a mercy killing. I'm on the sex. And Fox Reservation. Reservation. Okay. okay, cool. I've been in Oklahoma since 2010. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever been to Oklahoma. I don't know that I have. I've not been. I've not been out west much at all. I went to Excuse Denver me. once, uh, and we just drove through. Mm -hmm. We stayed in Denver for a week. That was for. Uh, that was in high school. And then I've been to Kansas a few, a handful of times. I've not, re not really been out west much besides that, so. This is a one of, uh, kind of a cute, or funny story, I don't know if it's pretty funny, about Kansas. About Kansas? <laughs> well, the girls, the older girls do, like, a quiz team for Bible quizzing, <clears throat> like, it's like a Sunday school class sort of thing where they go to, and they memorize Bible verses and Bible stories, and then they go to actual meet with other kids, and they get asked questions about the stories that they have to answer, and if you get a good enough score enough times, you qualify for, like, the next level, the regional meet, which they, they qualified for, and it's in Kansas. The girls, 
they don't, they've left the state before, but they don't really understand. They think Kansas is like this magical land because it's not Missouri. <laughs> they want to be like, we're going to drive to Kansas. It's going to look exactly the same. We're it's going not to like, I don't know if they think it's going to be like Hawaii and there's yeah, going to be these like, beautiful they're beaches. They're like, oh, it's like, it must be just like it's Paris. A, yeah, <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> so. Have we ever tried sun chokes or Jerusalem artichokes? Mm. Uh, I have not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Does, does mom have artichokes? Mm -hmm. She did. I think she used to. Maybe. She cut them down, maybe. Or not cut them down. The only way I like artichokes is smothered in cheese as a chip dip. So, growing artichokes would just make me oh, you, make, you make them really good when you uh, grill them. I don't need artichokes. Like, have I? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm thinking of asparagus. Your other wife no, made I'm artichokes. Thinking of, I'm thinking of asparagus, not artichokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Charlie, anytime on Pounce, let me know. Probably get you all you want. Well, thanks, right. Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. We got our hookup. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, been to Blackwell, Oklahoma. Used to live in Denver and hated it there. Uh, when we went to Denver, I was running a lot in high school at that point in time in my life. And I tried to run like five miles and almost didn't make it, yeah. which was, which back then should have been an easy run. And uh, running up there in that, in that thin air was quite the experience. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to call it a night, folks. Thanks so much for watching. And we got such a good feedback about lives. I think we'll continue to do some, uh, but we need more ideas. But don't post them here in the comments because we realize that once we leave, they disappear. If you come back in like 10 minutes, this video will be posted on regular YouTube. And just leave a suggestion in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear any ideas that you have about what you'd like to talk about because we love talking to you all. So. Your mom grew okra, not artichokes. Okay. Now oh, we know. Okay. Okra. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Sorry, mom. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, oh, okay. Grows a small sunflower. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody have a good night. Don't and... forget to give a thumbs up before you leave. And then uh, we're going to close it down here in just a second. Leave that comment of what in we should. In the actual comment section of what you'd like to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Have a good night.